I wake up some days with a thought, and today the thought was, why is it that there is no focus on trying to get the unvaccinated, and when I say unvaccinated, I mean those who have never had a COVID vaccine, why is there no push to get them boosted or vaccinated and boosted? And if you look at most of the recommendations, they're not very specific. They just say that if you haven't been up to date, you should get vaccinated. And they encourage people to continue to get vaccinated, even if they have never been vaccinated. But the question in my mind is that for the cohort who are unvaccinated, who are in the high risk group, why is there no greater push? You know, shouldn't you be concerned about protecting them more? Well, I think that the problem may be is that when they look at the data, they realize that that unvaccinated cohort seems to be relatively fine. And how I know that is because they keep on talking on YouTube. They keep on saying over and over, I'm unvaccinated and I'm absolutely fine. So I know there are a lot of them out there and they're just messing up the data they are not getting sick. But why? And so this is the question that I am really trying to encourage people to think about. If the high-risk cohort who are unvaccinated are not getting sick, why should the high-risk cohort who are vaccinated be getting sick themselves? Something doesn't fit. And this is why I said, it's just a simple question of the science. If you understand the science, things start to make sense. And so because of that, because of that work that I have done, which makes me able to explain these things, I have got here, if you're interested, this advanced course. I haven't really focused on it recently, but this is a, a work of determination. I had, this is over eight hours of content looking at every aspect of COVID-19. And I needed to do it because I recognized that if I didn't record this, I would forget a lot of the research. So I have covered, this is almost 60 modules of information. And so I would advise you, there is nothing like this anywhere in the world. I know this is going to be exceptionally valuable as time goes by. People don't yet know it because they think that COVID has therefore finished. And so therefore there's nothing more to worry about. But I'm telling you, we've still got a problem. And so by joining in these things, you get early access. I mean, this is almost 200 slides and this is only a small part of them. We're talking about 300 to 400 slides that I've built over the time looking at all aspects of COVID. So it's a very unique position. And this is why I'm saying to you, understanding is exceptionally important. And there is very little place other than what I'm doing for you to learn. Whether or not you agree with everything I said, or I say, there is a lot of science that is backing it up. Another quick reminder, and so look in the description if you're interested in that. The other quick reminder is that coming up is the COVID's hidden time bomb, rapid arterial aging. And again, this is an example of how I go ahead of the science because I can see what's happening because I've done so much research onto what happened in COVID, why it occurred, what are the mechanisms that you can then extrapolate the science to predict what's going to come next. So let's get back to the basic questions with why is it that the unvaccinated, and I mean even the high risk, seem to be fine? It really is a conundrum for those who don't fully understand what is going on. So here is a little bit of science to explain it and to also highlight why I'm very cautious when people say that they need to take COVID vaccines off the market. I'm saying you may not realize that, but there's a whole cohort of people who, if they don't get further boosters to, I can't say the word, to impact their immune system, they are at higher risk because this is what the data is showing. If they are not up to date with their vaccines, they're at higher risk. And so this is a problem. 
but it doesn't seem to be affecting the completely unvaccinated. It's just those who have already been on the treadmill, they can't seem to get off. So here is just a few basic points with regards to the science. As usual, that's the structure of the coronavirus. The blue bits here are the spike protein. This is the key that opens the lock to get inside the cell. And this is the cut section of it. You can see the spike proteins. There are about 25 on each virus. They are a trimer. So any one of these here can then be used as a key to get into the cell. So theoretically, if you have 25 and each one has three, that's 75 keys on the surface of each virus. And once they get inside a cell, they can then replicate. And you have numerous important proteins other than the spike protein. You have the membrane protein, the envelope protein, the nucleocapsid protein. And then when this is being replicated, it makes other proteins, what they call open read, reading frame, ORF proteins, which help to balance out and make sure that the virus is able to suppress the immune system and make new viral particles. And what's very interesting is that there seems to be a difference between with natural immunity. And this is a very, very important point. Because immunity is not just about immunity. Immunity is relevant to which part of the body is doing the work. So the skin immune system is different from the immune system in the urogenital tract, or different from the immune system in the gut, or different from the immune system in the upper airway, or different from the systemic immune system. But in a respiratory virus, one that infects your upper airways and to some degree your lungs, the critical part is the mucosal immunity. This bit here is very sophisticated. And so the virus, you want it that when the virus tries to infect, even if it infects a few cells, it can't break through this layer of immunity. And that's the point about mucosal immunity, because once it breaks through, it gets into the systemic system, the lymph nodes on the bloodstream, and then systemic antibodies kick in. What many people have failed to grasp is that by injecting a vaccine, you stimulate the systemic immune system. You are not really training the mucosal immune system. And this is why many people will continue to get infected, but because they have a systemic immune response, it can neutralize it. But it's that they've got almost a leaky fence. And you'll understand in a little bit why this is relevant. And this, as I said, is part of the problem. And this mucosal immune system is very, very sophisticated. Don't think it's just like a a chain fence. This, no, no, this is an electric fence with gates and drones and all kinds of things. And this is what it would look like. It has a mucus layer. It has cilia sweeping stuff away. It has IgA antibodies in this. And even if a cell gets infected, you have a very sophisticated layer right underneath the immune defense. And one important strategy that the natural immune system does is that actually antibodies are not that important. Because what they do is that because any cell that gets infected by the virus has to make the proteins for the virus in it, what then happens is it can identify the infected cell and rather than shooting the soldiers, um, it blows up the um, factory, which is a cell. It just kills the cell. And that's cellular immunity. It is extremely important in the context of COVID and mucosal immunity. And this is why I'm explaining this is because what you have, and this is my example of a, an image I'll show you in a second, is that mucosal immunity is the walls around the castle with the moat and the arches and the whole setup in place. On the other hand, stimulating systemic immunity is not having the castle in the open field. All you have is a lot of soldiers on the ground. There is no wall. And so when you're attacked, you can be attacked from multiple directions, not so easy to defend. 
And this is what I have that picture as. Mucosal defense here is the wall with the moat and the, 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 the archers fighting off the virus to prevent it getting in the castle. In the context of a systemic immunity, you haven't worried about this. It's just an open area. You've got lots of soldiers in terms of antibodies, but you haven't got the archers and the pikemen and so on on the ground. It, it is a different kind of immune response. And this is part of the reason why COVID continues to circulate so highly in highly vaccinated regions, because their mucosal immunity is not as effectively trained. So that then leads to the question, back to the question. So then why is it that the high risk, those with comorbidities who are unvaccinated, would still not be at the same kind of risk as those who are vaccinated in that same cohort? And it's down to mucosal immunity. It's really, really important because a lot of people don't get when it comes to severe COVID, the reason that you had severe disease was not just the virus. It was because the virus was able to evade the immune response. And then when the immune response occurred, it was delayed and very strong. It's what we call a delayed interferon response. That's what caused the cytokine storm. If you don't understand that, Nothing about this will make sense, which is why even if someone who is unvaccinated got COVID, because their natural immunity should be intact, it would mean that they would have an early interferon response. Even if they have a viral infection that goes to the, um, the airway and then down to the lungs, because there is no delayed late interferon response, it's very unlikely they'll have a cytokine storm. And that's what killed people. So it's very critical to understand the science around what is going on. But it raises the question, so therefore, why are the vaccinated still needing boosters? Because the numbers indicate that if they don't keep up to date, they're at higher risk of severe COVID. Now, let's be clear, we still don't fully understand the mechanism because I suspect that the pathology is somewhat different in a vaccinated person who gets COVID. Nobody seems to want to know this, so we don't have enough vac um, autopsies around on the vaccinated cohort, and this is a huge gap in our knowledge. But the point is, if there is still some kind of delay to the interferon response, if their mucosal immunity is still weak, I suspect they may still be at risk of this. And this may be why we have this unusual situation that a high-risk person who is unvaccinated and a high-risk person who is vaccinated, in a strange way, the vaccinated person could seem to be at higher risk. It's incredible. But when you understand the science, it makes sense. And this is what I'm saying to people is that Please don't underestimate how important it is to understand the science. Remember, accessible to you here, we're talking about these are huge pieces of information all the way through, almost eight hours of content, talking about every aspect, including, you have to remember, I know what the benefits are for the vaccine. So I can talk about benefits and risk. Who is there? Who will benefit? And how does IgG4 even fit with that? Most people look at this as a significant negative. It is to a certain extent, but if you've got COVID still circulating and you want to suppress the immune response against the spike protein, this may be protective. And so there is a cohort of people who may still benefit. That's why I'm saying when you understand the science, you can know who needs to be targeted targeted, why they need to be targeted, and bring the best outcomes across the population. But these questions are inconvenient. Nobody likes to hear them. They keep on saying, well, there is no evidence that the unvaccinated are fine. 
Well, I can tell them that I am looking at the comments all the time and they are telling me that they are fine. And so you realize, and especially if you look at low vaccinated regions like Haiti, 2.7% vaccinated, they are fine. Papua New Guinea, 4% vaccinated, it's fine. And so you know that in terms of natural immunity, if you have it at population level, they took the hit early on to some extent where they may have had some deaths with severe COVID-19, but they now have population level herd immunity. That's not the case in highly vaccinated regions. And my point is, it means that Houston, we have a problem going forward. Final reminder coming up in the next few days, COVID's hidden time bomb about rapid arterial aging, links to dementia, hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, you need to know this. This may not be relevant directly to you, but it could be highly important for your loved ones. Have a great evening and look out for the latest science coming up.